Hey guys, welcome back to the Shire. My name is Rebecca and I am an online reseller and a stay at home mom. And I currently sell on seven different platforms. Those sales have not been coming in, but I list on seven different platforms. That includes eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Curtsy, Kijizen, Facebook Marketplace, and Etsy. If you are new to this channel, welcome. This is part 12 of the Death to the Death Pile series. And that series is my goal to get all or at least most of my death pile items, which would be items that are currently not listed, listed before yard sale season really kicks off. I am located in Pennsylvania and today it is March 24th. So there are some yard sales that are starting, but it's not full fledged yard sale season just yet. So I'm trying to wait until more yard sales pick up to actually start sourcing at them, unless of course I happen upon one or drive past one, uh, but I'm not actively seeking it out. So I am still working through my unlisted inventory right now. To start off this video, I am going to give you guys a bit of an update, um, a visual update on the death pile. So I had listed all of the winter type items. If you have been watching since the beginning of this channel or well, the beginning of the channel and the beginning of the challenge, you know that I had been starting with like the winter coats and the cold weather type items. So any cold weather items I have right now have been more recently sourced. Um, I am still sourcing, just not yard sales. And I'm just starting to get into some of my warm weather adult items. Um, I'm right in the midst or right at the end of doing my kids items, which are kind of a mix of warm and colder weather, but I have a whole box of, of adult sized spring and summer type items that I haven't started listing yet. And I am definitely behind the ball on that. That should have been happening in like February as people are preparing for warmer weather, but I'm behind on that, but we are getting there. So I'm going to flip the camera around real quick and just kind of show you where we're at if you haven't seen like the very first video go back and watch that and see how many items i had it i don't even know the number but just look at the boxes and you'll see the massive difference from then until now all right you guys so this basically is what we have left so this tote has uh cold weather items in it um if you've seen some of my more recent thrift hauls then you'll might you might recognize some of those items but it's maybe like I think it's less than 10 items in there and then that is the Disney Infinity um, like video game stuff that I had bought and I will be having a video coming out probably next week or the end of this week um, where I'm going to be going through that so stay tuned for that this tote here let's get a good angle on this tote this whole tote is stuffed full of adult sized um, summer, spring, those types of clothes. There's a couple like bigger kid dresses and stuff on top, but it's pretty much all that. <laughs> and that's all we have left of the death pile. It's really this tote that's the death pile because that's all new stuff. So, and some of the stuff in here is new too, but there's a good chunk of it that's death pile items. So then if we go over here, of course, you know, diaper box, I'm a parent, I've got diaper boxes. So this is the 10 items that I showed you last week that I was supposed to have photographed. That didn't happen. Um, and then I will put more items to photograph this week to add to it in there. And that's it though. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm really happy with even getting that far. Um, now, if you saw my last video, you probably would have seen it on Monday. Um, I went sourcing again, so <laughs> there's going to be more items added to this, which I knew would happen, but this is still a good spot to be in, and I'm really looking forward to getting some of this listed. I don't know how everyone else's sales have been, but mine have been awful, and I think maybe part of the reason is I haven't been listing a whole lot of uh, warmer weather items, so hopefully that will help sales a little bit. So as you can see from those boxes, we have made amazing progress. Um, if you aren't listing your death pile items, list them. Like it's okay to have a little death pile, but you should really list that stuff. It's, it's so freeing. Um, and I didn't even show you guys, but hold on a minute. 
Let me take you on one more field trip. All right, so here's my closet. So we have the corner right there. This is my personal closet and I had it stuffed full of things, but I can't open it completely just because I have this box here right now. But if I just stop hitting everything, that's it. This was packed, like stacked, like three boxes high. It was huge. That box is not reselling. All that stuff is just personal stuff. So uh, my closet is now free. <laughs> I have a free closet of inventory items. Um, I've got a violin there that hasn't been played in years, but that's, that's awesome. So yeah, I'm getting my closet back. That is a great feeling. <laughs> once I stack these two totes, I just have them beside each other to show you guys. But once I stack them back, I'll be able to actually open my closet doors the whole way, uh, which is awesome. I can't guarantee that uh, I'm not gonna like get another death pile. I mean, I'm already starting another one. It's just, it's never ending when you're sourcing um, and when you're reselling, you're just picking up things when you can. I'm trying to be a lot more selective though. And I was actually a little bit overwhelmed after my last sourcing trip. Cause I was like, oh, I feel like I'm just like never gonna get to the end of this. But when I went back and looked at the numbers, you know, I'm trying to list like 15 items a week and I picked up 16 items. So that really wasn't bad. If I didn't have a death pile at all, that would be like the exact number I would need for that week. And I think that's a good place to be. Okay, so enough about all that. So if you're not familiar with the format of these types of videos, I'll have a little discussion. We kind of already had one, but we're going to have another little discussion uh, on a different topic. And then the second half of the video will be me showing you the things that I'm going to be photographing this week, which is what I said last week. But so I have the 10 items from last week and then I'm going to do, I was going to do another 10 to bring it to 20 because I thought I could do 20 items. Um, I had like one extra. So I'm actually going to be doing 11 items this week. That'll be 21 total items. I'm really going to try to get those all photographed this week. And I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can do that. <laughs> so our topic for discussion this week is going to be sourcing. If you are new to reselling or if you're not a reseller, sourcing is just how you get your inventory, how you find the items to sell. And there are literally endless ways to source or to get inventory. You can find it anywhere and everywhere. Um, I'll say some of the most popular ones that you hear about are thrift stores, consignment stores, yard sales, uh, liquidation palace is like a big thing now and retail arbitrage. I'd say those are like the biggest ones that people talk about. And I would say that when you are first starting out, so talking to the people who aren't reselling yet or just starting to resell, my recommendation, and I think a recommendation of a lot of more veteran resellers, and I've been only doing this for two years, part-time essentially, but it's a pretty quick learning curve. So if I could go back and start again, my first sourcing would be my house. I think just about everybody has stuff in their house that they don't need or they don't want. And some of it's not worth reselling, but there's probably a lot of it that is, or you can at least make a couple bucks off of something that you would have just donated. So I think that getting stuff from your own home, because I mean, it's free, you probably paid for it at one point, but you can get some money back on it. So essentially free inventory. You can get inventory from friends and family. I've done that a lot. Um, it's like, I have things in my mind that are in my home that I want to resell, but I just haven't brought them to the death pile yet, essentially. So hopefully, you know, we can get there at some point. And if you just think about it, so like my husband and I just got new phones. So I have two old cell phones to sell. They're not like unusable, they're just older. Um, I know I have like two pairs of shoes that I don't wear anymore that are still in good condition. I can sell those. My husband has a coat he wants me to sell for him. I have a coat I want to sell, probably two coats actually. Um, I had a neutral bullet that the motor stopped working, but it has like the cups and other stuff. You can sell those types of things, like attachments to different um, appliances and things like that. So there's a lot of things in your own home that you could sell. But so you can sell stuff from yourself, friends and family, you can always reach out to them and be like, hey, if there's anything you plan on donating, if you don't mind, let me look through it first. 
and you know I'll you, know, you can even volunteer to take all that you know the stuff that you also don't want to sell um, you can take that away for them you can take it to the thrift store after you've searched through it I'm getting really distracted I'm sorry there is a really pretty uh, red cardinal outside of my window I wish I could show it to you guys, but there's no way you would see it through the screen. My phone always just focuses right on the screen and you just get a giant grid pattern. <laughs> okay, so we talked about free inventory. You can get it from your house. You can get it from friends and family. You can go to yard sales, which is my personal favorite way of sourcing. I just enjoy yard sales. Um, and I feel like you can get really good prices on things because people literally stand out there for a couple days to get rid of their stuff. So chances are they don't want to put it back in their house or have to haul it to a thrift store or something. So you're also able to kind of negotiate prices, which is really nice. Um, then, you know, you got thrift stores, thrift stores, consignment stores, you know, the whole places that already have secondhand items. You can buy them from them and then you sell them. Uh, you know, it's kind of debatable on how good that is. I mean, I think that's how most people source, but prices are going up. And that definitely is cause for concern as far as cost of goods goes. Um, and that's where people find their little honey holes, they call them. So that's the like smaller shops usually that they don't want to share with other people. Um, and also secondhand wise, you also have places like the Goodwill bins. If you're not familiar with that, it's the Goodwill outlets. Officially, I think it's called the Goodwill outlets. And that's just everything that hasn't sold at Goodwills or items that um the goodwill just couldn't accept they just have so much inventory that it just goes straight to this goodwill outlets goodwill bins and it's like a pay by the pound thrift store basically but things aren't like hung up all nice you have to like dig through them so those are some options there's also retail arbitrage which is going to actual stores not thrift stores but just like regular stores and purchasing items to resell typically you're buying things that are clearanced um, and you can do this literally anywhere. I think it's pretty popular to go to places like Ross and TJ Maxx. I haven't delved into this too much. I have a couple things here and there that I've tried to do that with. Um, they actually aren't listed yet. I bought them and photographed them, but they haven't gotten listed. So I can't speak too much on how well that's going to work for me. But I mean, you could literally go to like Kohl's Clarence Rack and buy a shirt for like three bucks and try to flip it for 10 bucks. You're not going to make a whole lot of money that way. Uh, but in theory, you could do it. And then there's the liquidation pallets, which I think it's bigger resellers that typically get into that because pallets usually cost like on the low end, a couple hundred, oftentimes like a couple thousand dollars. And that's, that's a big investment. <laughs> um, I personally don't think I'll ever get into that. My husband wants to do like an Amazon return pallet at some point. I don't, I'm not really interested in doing that, but he wants to, so I don't know. We probably won't, but, <laughs> um, you know, those, those kinds of options are out there. So, you know, it's, it's hard to source. Well, and I was going to say also sourcing online. I mean, you can source from online stores as well as sourcing from the platforms that you can sell on. You can buy stuff on Poshmark and eBay, Mercari, wherever, Facebook Marketplace, and then you can turn around and sell it too. Not everybody knows what items are worth and not everybody's trying to like get the highest dollar. Some people really are just trying to sell stuff out of their closet and get rid of it. So like I said in the beginning, there's endless ways to source. You can find stuff just about anywhere. I know some people find stuff in lost and found bins and they've made a deal with um, you know, certain places. I think Commonwealth Picker talks about that, Kevin. You know, he talks about how he has like a deal with this, uh, like a country club or a golf, like country club, I guess they call them, with a golf course, whatever. You know what I mean? Where I guess at the end of a season or something, he goes in, he pays them a certain amount for all the stuff in there lost and found. So he's got like golf head, uh, golf club head covers. You can tell I don't golf. Um, you know, and things like that, that he's making money off of that way. So, you know, if you're just getting into reselling and just starting, I highly recommend that you start with zero dollars and sell the stuff from your own home or that's given to you uh, for free. And then only use that money to put it back into your business. That's how I wish I would have started. Um, and I didn't really do that. I kind of sort of did it, but not really. 
So that's kind of just my spiel about sourcing. I know some people have been asking more in-depth questions um, about some of these topics I cover, and I will do more in-depth videos to replace these death pile videos, if that makes sense. <laughs> so once this death pile challenge is over, this weekly video that I put out on Wednesdays will get replaced with other videos about, you know, about whatever that's related to reselling. You know, I can show you my office space, I can show you my inventory system, I can talk about, you know, basically how to get started on reselling. I can show you the different platforms that I sell on and show you how to sell on them or just talk about the pros and cons of different platforms. Um, talking about shipping, shipping supplies, there's just endless topics, really. <laughs> it's just about what you guys want me to talk about. So let me know in the comments, let me know um, well, if you do already source, let me know where your favorite place is to source and or your favorite method of sourcing. Um, and let me know what you want to see from me in the future as far as, you know, either these little like snippets of topics or longer term if you want me to see or if you want me to show you um, videos about any other anything else. Just let me know what it is you guys want me to talk about. All right, so we're going to get into the items that I'm going to photograph this week hopefully. Um, as I said, there are 11 items and I'm still working through the kids items. So there's still mostly kids items. There's a few other things thrown in. Um, and also I'm still working on that like flat lay photography setup. So I'm still trying to batch work those smaller items. So none of this stuff will get like hung up on the wall on a hanger or anything like that. I tried to save those things for like the spring summer bin. Um, to make it easier just to put all together. So let me show you what I've got. This first item is actually not a kid's item, um, but it is this like, it's like a craft apron, I guess you would call it. When I first picked it up, I honestly like quick glance thought these were chickens. I thought it was one of those little aprons where you put the eggs in. It's not, <laughs> it's just like a craft utility kind of apron. I actually used this at our yard sale over the last summer and it worked really well. So it's got, these birds, not chickens, but it's got this little like key ring here. This is a snap closure pocket. Um, and then it just has like, these are kind of sewn in little pockets. Here's another snap pocket on this side. And then it just has the long straps. You just tie it around you. This is from the brand Food Fight. It says Napa, Whoa. let's try that again. It says Napa, California. Um, I looked it up, weren't many comps. I think it's just like, I mean, I could be wrong about this, but it seemed like it was maybe just like a little Etsy shop or something. Um, but I think this is really cute. This would be really nice for someone who, you know, works, I don't know, like a concession stand or something. Someone who needs to put some money, notepad, whatever, like waitress type thing. I don't know if waitresses are allowed to wear things like this. Um, or, you know, if you're a crafter and you can put your crafting tools in it. So I think this is definitely a multi-use item and it worked really well for me. I didn't buy it to use for the yard sale, but uh, when yard sale season came, not yard sale season, but when our yard sale came around, I needed something to use. So I pulled that out, used it. And I think I had paid, I wanna say it was like $1.50 or something. I think it was actually in like the, the toys section um, of the thrift store. So if you follow me on Instagram, I am at the Cozy Shire on Instagram. If you don't follow me over there yet, um, then you'll know that last week I had a little like mommy, mommy son, mama son, whatever, um, little trip with my son. He had like a dentist appointment. It was his first one. He did great. Um, but he's three years old. So we went out afterwards. Of course, he didn't want to go home and take a nap, but I asked him if he wanted to go to Goodwill and he said yes. So oh, after my own heart, right? So we pretty much looked for like just our family or whatever. But I also, as I was looking through kids clothes, I found a few things um, that I thought would be worth reselling. So I didn't do like a haul video because it's only like three items, I think. But this is one of the items. This this is just stinking adorable. Uh, this is Matilda Jane. If you're not familiar with Matilda Jane, they make a lot of these like, um, like mixed print little dresses or whatever. This is a 12 to 18 months. 
and my daughter like just outgrew 12 to 18 months or you can bet her butt would be in this thing <laughs> but she's an 18 to 24 now so this was three dollars and 25 cents i get like was like a 10 percent discount i think for military i think it's 10 i can never remember this if it's 10 or 20 but either way it was a little bit less than three dollars 25 cents for military discount and like look at the buttons on the back oh my gosh it is so stinking cute but i think this will be great for this season i haven't seen any stains or anything on it also says matilda jane down here uh yeah so if you have a little girl and you want this let me know it's so cute the other item from that trip was this little bathing suit it's like this shimmery with a heart little like belt buckle thing um, and this is new with tags it is by the brand Penelope Mac, which I'd never heard of, but it kind of just like, it looked like something. I know people say that, but you know, in kids clothes, you see like a tag like this, it seemed like something I wanted to look up and, uh, it's new with tags. So I definitely wanted to look it up. It is a UPF 50 plus sun protection swimsuit. I don't really ever understand how much sun protection, something that's like. I mean, look how much skin is still gonna show <laughs> like unless you're wearing like a t-shirt or whatever i guess it blocks the uv from her torso but anyway this is an 18 month swimsuit so once again it wouldn't fit my daughter and we are too pasty white here to not have more sun protection than what this would provide um and it didn't have a price tag on it but i think they charged me like three dollars and fifty cents again something like that so the comps looked pretty good for this brand. I didn't see this exact one, but I didn't delve like really deep into the brand. But from what I looked up real quick on eBay, it could be like a 20 to $30 little uh, swimsuit. So we'll see. Those two items were the only thing from that Goodwill thrift haul that I'm gonna show you right now. The only other item I had gotten was um, to resell was a North Face vest, um, but that's in my winter bin now so <laughs> won't be seeing that right now but this next item is a two-piece set it's a kids set i've gotten at a yard sale i feel like i paid like two bucks for the whole set but it is let me sn these snaps there we go this is harley davidson like long sleeve bodysuit it's made to look like a t-shirt and it says ride like you mean it ride like you mean it here we go it is like an official harley davidson tag and this is size 18 months and there we go so this is the top and then the bottoms are like these little sweatpants and it just says Harley Davidson down the side. So I'm not sure exactly what this will go for. The only other kids Harley item I had was like a like a onesie t-shirt, if that makes sense. It was just a t-shirt, but it had like the little fold over shoulder tabs. Um, and that never sold. It had some like very light staining, but it was also like a three month size. I don't know. So. Hopefully this one will do a little bit better off the top of my head without like looking up comps. I'm thinking maybe like $18 to list it and except hoping to get like around 15. Next we have another outfit set and this wasn't a hand-me-down box, but it wasn't something I really wanted to use for my kids. Um, and it's like in okay condition. It's not great. So probably won't get a whole lot, but anyway, it is an Ed Hardy outfit. I don't, so I feel like Ed Hardy kind of came back into popularity a little bit last year. I haven't heard anything about it recently, so it might have come and gone again already. But, you know, the sleeves just kind of look like tattoos, sort of. And this outfit is, what size is this? Oh, that's tiny. 12 to 18 months, I think is what it says again. There's a lot of stuff in the same size. It doesn't say it there. Um, and then the back also has what is that fish? Is that like a koi fish, I think? So it's just a long sleeve top. It does have snaps up here to get their heads through. 
and then the sweatpants for the bottom match like the sleeves from the top. Um, I'm trying to read this. Out. Yeah, it is 12 to 18 months. Okay. So a couple outfit sets in the same size or not the same style though. I don't really think, I don't know. I mean, maybe Harley and Ed Hardy kind of sort of go together. Uh, and this says Ed Hardy on the butt too. So no idea. Probably again, I'll probably list it around like that $18 mark and see what happens. But the last outfit set I have, I had picked up at a different church thrift store. Not the one from the last video, it's a different one. I think it was like $1.50 for this set. Um, and it was just too cool to leave behind. So it's a like a, I assume it's a pajama set. It's shorts and short sleeve shirt. But it's Snoopy. And... There's no like brand tag. It just says it's six to nine months. Um, say it's like a vintage six to nine months, <laughs> but it is single stitch. It's hard to see with the pattern, but you can see here a little bit better. So um, if you're not too familiar with like vintage items, single stitch is a vintage style of stitching where they literally only used one line of stitching like here. So nowadays it'd be this one and then above it, there'd be a second one. And this has the year, well, it has two years. It says 1958, 1965. So I'm assuming this is like a 65. Uh, let's see. I gotta stop putting my face so close. I don't know if you can see it, but right in here. Um, I have no idea. Like, I don't know if this is like a collector's item type thing. I mean, I don't think it was ever used because it, I mean, it doesn't feel like it was ever like washed or used. I don't, hadn't seen any stains or anything on it. It says it's the United Features Syndicate. I don't know anything about that. The nail that I'm looking at, there might be some very light staining under the collar. I feel like this always happens when I get it in like studio light. We'll find out when I go to actually photograph it. Can't tell, it might just be my eyes playing tricks on me. But um, then it has these little shorts that go with it. Same thing on both sides. But I don't think the tag actually had a year. Well, it says made in Hong Kong. So yeah, they're definitely vintage. I'm assuming 60s is what I will probably go with. I'll probably list it as, what was that year? 65, but I don't know. I have no idea what to list this at. I have to see if there's actually like a market for collecting these rather than like putting your kid in them these days. I don't know, it's Snoopy. People still love Snoopy, right? Next is actually um, something from my husband. He's been, or his parents have been handing him things. Both of our parents are still trying to clear our stuff out of their homes since, you know, it's been like 12 years since we lived there, uh, like long-term. And every time he seems to go back to his parents, he gets something. <laughs> so this week or the other week, he got this old stuffed animal. So it's Woody Woodpecker. If you don't know, you should know. But if you don't know, Woody Woodpecker. Um, he's a little bit floppy in the head, but definitely like older as far as the stuffing goes. Even the tag is still on. Um, and it just says, yeah, Woody Woodpecker. And Universal Studios licensing, made in China, but he's in like perfect condition. And I asked my husband, I was like, did you play with this? And he's like, no, it basically just sat on a shelf in my room. So I guess that's why it's in excellent condition. The tag says 1999, it says Toy Network, sun shining on it, and then 1999. So I did look up comps on this already, and I think I can get somewhere around like the 18 to $20 mark, uh, which is pretty good for a stuffed animal. So, or a plush. Typically they're called plush when you're reselling them. So Woody Woodpecker plush. Last group of items are bras. <laughs> so we actually have four bras. Um, and since I typically flat lay bras, that's why. But most of these won't bring a whole lot of money. It's hard to hold these up. So this is just like a plain 
white bra and it says it's a size small. It's, what is the brand? I just say Hanes, is it Hanes? Yeah, it's just a Hanes brand. Um, I picked this up at a yard sale. I think it was like a dollar or two and it's new with tags. So can't get this tag apart. There we go. Um, don't know how much it was originally, but it does have a barcode. So we'll see if that comes up. It just has some nice little detailing. Something, a Hanes bra, I mean, this is probably like 10 bucks or something like that. Maybe listed at like 12 and hope to get 10. The next one is this black bra. Just regular bra. New with tag still. This was an Auden bra. So that's Target. And this one, it was originally $15. So once again, we're looking probably around that like 10 to $12 range. Um, and it's just the lightly lined wire free bra. So I had no cost of goods into this one. This next one I had gotten at a yard sale and it is like more like a bralette, which I think this will be nice for the summertime. Um, it's a size large, which says 36 C to D to 38 A to C. And this is new with tags, Victoria's Secret. It says it was originally $29.50. So there's tag with a barcode. Uh, it doesn't have like any kind of closure in the back, so. But it does have like very light padding. So I think this will be really cute for, for summertime. People like to wear these like under different tops. Um, I don't know, pricing wise, maybe closer to the 15, I would think, but I'll have to check the comps on that. And the last item you guys already saw in a haul, so I won't like go deep into it, but it's this bra that I picked up pretty recently from Goodwill. I think this was Victoria's Secret Sport. Not new, it's definitely pre-owned, but in great condition. Yeah, like VSX Sport. So I had, let's see, what was it? About five bucks into this one. So um, I believe the comps were around 30, 25 to 30, I think on this one. And it says it on the back there too. Uh, maybe you can't see that. There you go. That's everything that I plan to list, photograph and hopefully list uh, this coming week. And then I will have a video out probably on Saturday for all that Disney Infinity character stuff. Um, I think I'm going to make a video, like a screen recording video showing how I am looking these items up. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely subscribe and hit the bell notification if you aren't already. So it'll tell you when I'm posting a new video and you won't miss that one. Um, and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on Instagram, you can follow me there um, at the Cozy Shire and kind of get a sneak peek at some things when I do find them or, you know, if there's shorter sourcing trips if I just find one or two things. And then also, if you watched my last video about that whole big free book haul, <laughs> that'll be another video probably that I'll go through everything there uh, with you guys. And I do plan to sort the clothing items that I got from that haul into these boxes as well. I might do that later today, <laughs> we'll see. I don't think I'll like record that or anything, but it might be on my Instagram. So head over there. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.